Hello and welcome to another Maximum Power video. I'm Paul. Um, obviously I was hoping to try and do a few more of these more regularly. It's not quite gone to plan, um, but I first had a bit of time just to sort out a few things. Um, busy um, recording uh, when I can uh, for a new, um, couple of new episodes to come. I recently recorded with uh, Guy Ashley Day. Um, who wrote for Games TM for quite a few years, but as well as that, also um, worked at Nintendo for a few years, so he has some great stories to tell, and also um, or currently works at Team 17 as well. So, um, yeah, there was quite a lot to discuss there in like three hours. Um, I talked a little bit about the um, Amiga Mini, which has just been announced this week, uh, well, the week of recording this. Um, yeah, so obviously there's quite a few Team 17 games featured on there, seeing they were a big part of um, the Amiga uh, back in the day anyway. So I just thought I'd try and do two videos really, because I've had quite a few um, things delivered, um, magazines, etc. Um, but then also, to sort of be trying to tidy up today, um, just finding tons of um, magazines that I've been buying over the last... Um, probably in the last few months really. So some of this um, has sort of been bought um, for future, um, you know, podcast research really. And some of the magazines that I've picked up, um, you don't really get mentioned very often because obviously things like Mini Machines and, you know, um, Sega Power and things like that do get mentioned quite a bit. I know like in one of the most recent videos, we looked at uh, Sega Mania a little bit as well, which is out now. Um, the issue 7 of um, Amiga Addict is out uh, very soon as well but they should start uh, landing in the next couple of days so I'm looking forward to that because I did a feature on a Computer Warrior um, from Eagle Comic so i trying to do something a little bit different today so I don't know how well, this issue is sorry, not today um, so I don't know how that will go down but anyway, I just wanted to um, have a quick look at uh, a few Games magazines. Um, there are like several issues of different titles here, so it's not just going to be a case of oh look at this one and oh look at this one because otherwise they'll go on for absolutely ages. So when I've done videos like this in the past, you know I've had a proper look through you know every issue going back to the early videos that we did. Um, but it's just to sort of like give a bit of a shout out to some of these because they're not really ones that like I say get mentioned very often. So. Um, the first one really, obviously writing for Amigo Addict now, um, I do try to keep these two things, you know, like some power up and Amigo Addict separately, but sometimes the line does blur a little bit. So um, I've been checking out, you know, more Amiga magazines. Um, there's like Amiga Active, uh, which came out, uh, well, more or less as Amiga format was going away and that lasted a couple of years. So I've been having a look through some of those, but this one done by uh, Impact Magazines. Some of you will remember um, Amiga Force. And um, yeah, this lasted for just over a year, I think it was. And here on the cover, new CD Amiga is here, complete with the uh, controller that uh, anyone who's obviously pre ordered the uh, Mini Amiga will be uh, or the A500 Mini, I should call it really, seeing the word Amiga doesn't actually appear. Um, yeah, so that's the controller that you're going to be getting on the back here we have got an advert for surf ninjas if anyone remembers uh that film with leslie nielsen in if you seem to remember correctly so uh amiga force so this is like issue eight from august 1993 um like i say done by impact magazines um formerly well all part of euro press so there's quite a few things in here like you know the you know the magazine layout there um, just trying to zoom in a little bit so we've got some like Lemmings 2 coverage there as well um, so it's it's a funny one because obviously there's so much um, going on you know, in this magazine you've got things like this is supposed to be a bit different the top 100 games so we've got flashback at number 1 which was absolutely fantastic uh, Chat Manager uh, 92, is that? Oh, Chat Manager 93, Desert Strike, World Class Cricket, and A Train. Um, I think I've only really bothered with uh, three of those. Wasn't really into cricket games and not really into uh, 
the train simulator either. Um, and then the main review here, uh, getting uh, an Amiga Force Rave is Syndicate. And just try and move that just so it can be seen a little bit better. And the score, they gave it there, 94%. So not bad at all. Syndicate was absolutely brilliant on the Amiga. I remember um, playing that for the first time, you know, and uh, mates. May have been on um, not official um, release, we'll, we shall say. And then obviously we've got the uh, big feature on the CD32 there. So, um, yeah, never actually played the CD32. Even when I went and go to games events, it didn't actually um, interest me, you know, that much. And then we've also got a feature on Sensible Software, a big part of the Amiga scene as well there. We've got John Hare in one of the pictures as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time looking through these. One of the um, things that do stick with me, oh, yeah, one of the things that does stick with me, sorry, is uh, these, the little cutout cheat type cards. So obviously shaped like discs and then you can just pop them in your boxes or with the discs. So on the back there it tells you um, the cheat and tip. Uh, I was like thinking the other day, you know, obviously you don't really get cheats anymore, do you? You know, it's, um, it's something like which is very 80s and 90s or so it feels, you know. I'm sure like a couple of games do have, you know, cheats built in and stuff but I don't know it just seems very much of the time and uh, just while I see it there budget review of one of my favourite games Harley Quinn um, well worth playing anyone who's not played it before but yeah I'm just going to move on and uh, this time I'm going to go to a Super Nintendo magazine and again uh, a bit back I was trying to collect uh, full sets of the Super Nintendo uh, magazines um, Luckily, it's not as full on the same Mark Jowett does with the Sega Mag stuff. But um, with Super Action, um, it went on for about 26 issues. Uh, again, because it was like Euro Press um, magazine, it did just end quite abruptly. Um, and then obviously you have things like SNES Force and um, Enforce before that, you know, and then they faded away with Impact magazines. And then obviously, as everyone knows, you've got Total, Super Play. Um, Nintendo magazine system those few I have actually got full sets for so those are the ones that I do want to keep hold of so anyway um, I got a few um, super actions so this was god it must be a few months ago now and this came with like some of the early issues so it was um, done by uh, Frank O'Connor who's now quite high up uh, over at why well, can't I think what it's called um, the guys behind the Halo games anyway so just a few of the covers here. Um, the early issues again come with a spine. I'm more than making reference to that because it is relevant in a minute. So super action there. This is issue six, I think it is. Um, one pound ninety five. It's hardly anything, you know. One pound ninety five, and it's one hundred and sixteen pages. And then issue seven with a game Bob that some people really do like. Um, it's not something that I really got on with myself very often. Um, but basically it came to the point uh, when you got to issue 8 it had a bit of a redesign the spine is no more and it's been relaunched at 99 pence so this was um, they had like a bit of a shake up so before when you had this um, 116 page magazine you know um, not really rival rivaling you know um, super play nothing will beat super play in my eyes but um still not a bad read you know it has some really talented writers on it i think every single magazine has got at least one or two talented writers you know um and that's one reason why you started seeing a few people moving around and stuff i mean um frank left to then go over to future um because so he did work on total for a while anyway so looking at these few issues here i think i mentioned this on the podcast before so You've got this like relaunch at 99p. You know, this is what um, Europress were doing. So, like with Mega Action, um, GB Action, um, I think it may have just been those three really. Uh, they were all launched at 99p, well, relaunched. And it was just like next to nothing. I mean, there were 68 pages, which isn't bad at all, but it was like proper pocket money price, you know, because uh, stuff like this, we even got in our school library to you know, sort of encourage more kids to go in after school you know so like 
um, they had like a small budget to go to the news agents and buy a few magazines and uh, it was nice to see you know but half the time I just bought these just you know for myself to obviously keep so um, just to try and have a quick look we've got um, Simon Crane he obviously went on to work on a lot of magazines so we've got a preview here for Battletech on a Super Nintendo um, again even for relaunch isn't too bad I'm just trying to find um, the, like the, the, one of the main reviews there is um, Cool World on Super Nintendo again which goes for stupid money um, I never actually ever played it it's not really you know it didn't really appeal to me um, your biggest release so here but Frank is actually still on this one I think he stayed just for like I say I think he, I'm sure he'd gone by the next issue so he just saw the relaunch so we've got Star Fox here um, it's basically a Japanese uh, import review and again anyone who's roughly my age will remember all the time I used to import the uh, games and it got a whopping 96% so not bad at all um, so yeah that's just a very very quick look um, just for me on peace of mind I just want to see if uh, not Frank was still editor still even an issue uh, um, 9 so it did stay for quite some time you know but it's like bear in mind I only stayed for you know 20 odd um, issues and then just have a quick look uh, God, on this one the paper qualities are uh, changed quite a bit as well no longer glossy a bit more like newspaper-esque um here we've got wwf royal rumble a game that i used to love playing with my mate but again it got a really bad score there 49 percent so it was a big step up though from um super wrestlemania so i think that's a little bit harsh really 49 percent but again that's like from september 1993 so we've got more combat there on the cover and the other magazine that I'm going to talk about briefly um, is, I'm just trying to get these in order a little bit, it's this one, Sega Zone. So this was done by Dennis, the people um, behind Zero and obviously Game Zone as well because Game Zone um, sort of split, they like turned into Nintendo Game Zone. Um, again, you don't really see that many of those, um, at least you know, if you wanted to full set of them anyway. So, uh, Sega Zone, we've got a few issues here. So, let's say we've got issue 10 with uh, General Chaos on the cover. Uh, again, still under Dennis. And then you've also got James Pond 3 on that one. But then Future bought it. And um, then later on, Future sold it onto Maverick and uh, Maverick Magazines, as mentioned before had a knack of absolutely killing them so it went from you know a 100 page magazine down to about 30 odd and then more or less just a poster special and then faded away so uh here we've got the um future version with again a spine the usual uh future glossiness and you've also got this one here um with uh sonic um well cd lift off the uh 50 games you need to know about so that's quite a lot and a lot of hype there for the Mega CD. Uh, but yeah, basically what I wanted to show you was with this one. Is it this issue? All right, it's even issue 11 before we added the spine. It was just snapped up by Future. So it almost lasted a year under Dennis. But where is it? Um, we've got quite a few uh, people interviewed. Uh, let's just try and find it on the welcome page oh god i'll just show you this because it's a game i absolutely hate and it is books of the bobcat again i mean you look at the layout there there's so many uh screenshots and pictures things like that what score did they give it 77 percent. to be fair that's probably be about right even though i'm not keen on it um i just feel like at the time when I played it, I remember like one of my old mates, uh, Paul Fireman, I still bring this up with him, um, he bought it and it was just, like fantastic, brilliant and I just I just think it's so fast, it sort of just backfires and you go flying off the uh, screen and stuff. But anyway, um, the last thing I want to show really was, it's called Joypad Jury, so it's all the viewers, you know, like people featured 
And if you have a lot there, you've got a massive mixture of people from Dennis and Future on the same page. Um, it was really good to see that, you know, because again, I very, very rarely bought um, Sega Zone. I mean, all the SNES mags, you know, I used to get majority of those. Um, a lot of things like the um, multi-format magazines as well. Uh, you know, like your games, uh, games master of a couple of issues of uh, Bad Influence, uh, CVG and stuff like that. But um, some of the Sega magazines, if it was a free gift on, I'd always get it as well. You know, the nice little touches, books, stickers, badges. You know, pin badges were great. You know, back then. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's good to see those because, again, I still think most magazines had a couple of things that were worth uh, you know checking out. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it there because I've been going about 15 minutes. Um, obviously, thank you for watching if you have done, and especially watching to the end. And uh, yeah, I'll try and get another one of these up very, very soon, uh, just showing off a few other little bits. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.